exciting, Mrs. Drysdale? Discovering that your next door neighbors may be descendants of the very first settlers. Well, if it's true, but I just can't believe it. The Clampets are so uncouth, so unrefined. I prefer unspoiled. <laughs> yes, Madam President. <laughs> Yes, Ro? Did you ask your teacher over to pot school about that music like I told you? <laughs> oh, yes, sir, Uncle Jet. She explained it to me and I got it all wrote down. First of all, that there music is what you call chimes. Of them's holler tubes that makes ringing sounds when struck by a plunger or a striker. <laughs> sure. Oh, yes, sir. Now, then, there's a reason why them chimes only ring when somebody comes to the door. Like as if there was a lookout up on the roof of watching. <laughs> That's right. Uh, you see, there is a little button. And pushing that button makes that plunger hit them chimes. Mm -hmm. So whilst you go ahead and go to the door, I'm going up on the roof and catch that rascal that's pushing that button. <laughs> Why, the ladies, come Mr. in, Clampett. come in. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Clampett. Have a chip on. Oh, what a treat, of course. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Where's Granny? Oh, she's out in the kitchen, stone grinding some cornmeal. Stone grinding cornmeal? Now, that's something we must see, Mrs. Drysdale. Come along. Uh, in a moment, Madam President. Uh, Mr. Clampett, will you tell your cousin Pearl that my car and chauffeur are at her disposal? Sure will. Pearl! Can you eat your children? Oh, yes, of course. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, Mr. Clampett, uh, just what is a chitlin? Oh, these ain't ordinary chitlins. These are granny specials. They is possum innards deep fried in boiling hog fat. <laughs> Pearl, how come you to be using Miss Drysdale's car? Well, kid, now that we's high society, I can't be seen riding around in that old truck. When did we high society? Since that historical lady found out that your ancestors come to this country for the Mayflower. What's that got to do with me? That's the way society works, kid. The earlier your kinfolk got here, higher up that puts you. Well, I reckon the high society folks is the Indians. <laughs> No, I don't work that way. How come? I don't know how come. Well, they was here for anybody else. No, 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 Jed. Let's not try to change the rules. Let's just start enjoying the game. Up to now, Mrs. Drysdale's treated us like wet dogs at a wedding. Yeah, that's kind of warmed up. Warmed up? She can't do enough. Why, she's having her chauffeur take me to all the fancy stores and then to her beauty saloon. <laughs> an easier way to grind corn. Oh, there is. Now, back home, we took our turn of corn to the grist mill down by Catfish Creek. Here in Beverly Hills, they ain't got no creek nor river to turn the mill wheel. So we have to go back to grinding corn like we learned from the Indians. But surely any supermarket would Mrs. Drysdale, this is a priceless experience. A direct contact with the past. You can read about these things. But to actually participate in activities familiar to our ancestors is... It's to hold history in our hands. I don't think I could hold anything in mine. <laughs> Smart am I, do they? I'm afraid they do. Isn't it shameful how soft they've gotten? Well, you come on over here, Miss Drysdale. There ain't nothing like hot soapy water good for sore hands. Oh, thank you. And this here soap will take the sting out of the pain. You're very kind. And while you got your hands in the hot soapy water, why, you might as well do a few of these dishes. This is... Well, you seem to set quite a store on handling all of these old historical pewter pots and pans. Oh, I do. I do. Uh, but I have to meet my husband at his bank. Immediately. <laughs> In fact, I'm late now. But don't you worry, Miss Drysdale. I'll save up a bunch of thrills for you. Like churning and lie making and corn husking and chicken plucking and goat milking. <laughs> She's the 
does enjoy it. Did you see her run so she could hurry back? <laughs> now, whose idea was the two baby goats? Ellie Mays. <laughs> if I didn't know. I declare, girl, you are the limit when it comes to dragging home critters. All I sent you for was a couple of chickens and a milk and goat for granny. Well, I know, Pa, but these little rascals cried something awful when we commenced to taking their ma away from them. <laughs> Oh, dear, I forgot the pearl has my car. Oh, Miss Drysdale, someplace you gotta go? Uh, yes, to the bank, see Milton. I'll call a cab. Oh, no, no, that'd be downright unneighborly of us to let you do that. Well, Jeff Rowe and Ellie May can drive you down there. Sure will. In this truck? Yeah, one good turn deserves another. After all, you let Pearl take your car. Oh, yeah, you have the back seat all to yourself, Miss oh, Drysdale. I'm terrible, sorry. I better go up. Uh, uh, Ain't nobody can get me there faster than we can, no. Miss Drysdale. Oh, don't worry, Miss Drysdale. This hickory bench is tied on good and tight. Yeah, but I'm. Oh, Here, I... Mrs. Drysdale, you can hold that little fella so he won't bother me when I drive. Oh. Oh. Now, remember, she's in a hurry, but uh, yeah. drive careful, Jethro. Well, I think I better, uh, I better not go with you. I... Oh. 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 Way to the bank, Mrs. Drysdale, and you said you was in a hurry. <laughs> One side, everybody, get out of the way. Oh, Mrs. Drysdale! Come over. Please, please. We're doing the best we can, Mrs. Drysdale. Move over. Get out of the way. <laughs> oh, That's please. Nick, Mrs. Drysdale, make a noise like a siren. Move over. Out of the way. Come on, move over. <laughs> Fine, but at least they don't run around the streets of Beverly Hills. Smash! What happened to your beautiful spring hat? Oh! Oh boy, a crying jag. Get some coffee, y'all. I'll, I'll get her walking. Mommy, I can't understand. I, I, I can't understand this. I have never seen you take a drink before the cocktail hour. Let go of me. Marty, please, please lie down. I will not. Now, you're not going to be one of those kind of drunks, are you? I am not intoxicated. I'm mortified. The word is ossified. <laughs> when you listen to me, the clampets are to blame for this. Oh, of course, of course. And I suppose Granny gave you some of her corn. A huge bowl like this? <laughs> Here we are, Mrs. Drysdale. Have a sip of this. Thank you. I shall. <laughs> Oh, that does help. <laughs> Tell me, confidentially, what did happen to your hat? It was eaten by a goat. <laughs> Have some more coffee, Margaret. <laughs> M Mrs. Drysdale, you, you really must get a grip on yourself. <laughs> now, if Mrs. Miss Dandy verifies that the clampets are indeed First family material, then you too will be in the spotlight. I'll be in the hospital. <laughs> so help me if those uncouth hillbillies become my social peers, life will cease to be worth living. <laughs> oh, Miss Hathaway, take me home. Oh, cool. Oh, uh, Margaret, Margaret. What happened to your car? Did it get smashed too? Cousin Pearl has it. <laughs> Drysdale down to the bank, all right? Sure did, Uncle Jed. We got the goat tied out back in the kitchen. Granny milk you yet? Nope, she's saving her for Mrs. Drysdale. <laughs> Take yourself out to the kitchen. Miss Smith Standish wants to look at them old things in there. Okay, Uncle Jed. Well, come in, whoever you are. <laughs> Sure, 
Jed. Who are you? Well, they both play. Pearl who? Your cousin. Pearl. What did you do to that beauty saloon? That's our long s'il vous plaît. And they made me glamorous. You ruined your hair. You took out all the color and the curl, too. This ain't my hair. This is what you call a flatter wig. All them high society women is wearing them now. How come? Ain't they got no hair of their own? Of course they have. But variety is the spice of life. See who plays. said see who play. I thought you'd never ask. That's our strength. What does it mean? I don't know. But all them society women in the beauty salon kept to saying it to the fellas that was fixing their hair. Tell you, Jed, we gotta learn us some French if we're gonna be in high society. <clears throat> oh, uh, Mr. Chauffeur, uh, you, you, you may go, see vous play. Very good, madam. Good day, sir. Yes, sir, sure is, if it don't rain. <laughs> That's the way to live. A big limousine and a livered chauffeur. And then folks just no use high society. All you gotta do is say a few of them French words and they go to bowing and scraping all over the place. What's all this stuff? Them surprises for everybody. High society surprises. You ain't getting me in one of them wigs. Uncle <laughs> Jed. Uncle Jed, Granny uh, wants. Bonjour, Monsieur. <laughs> Oh, she. Come here, Ma. Uh, S'il vous plaît, that's all. Ma? Where'd you learn how to speak Italian? <laughs> hey, Granny, Ellie Mae, come look at Ma. She fell head first in a flour barrel. <laughs> we got our work cut out for us, making high society out of that one. You can see who play that again. Hey, <laughs> Pearl! May high society ladies don't go round carrying goats. Well, Miss Drysdale held one on her lap all the way to the bank. Didn't she just run? Oh, yeah, yeah. What's all the commotion in here? Looky yonder, glamorous cousin Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> Would you kindly tell me what is all so fired funny? Thank <laughs> you. You wouldn't know a high society woman if you'd see one. Well, I sure don't see one around here. Hey, look at all the fine surprises here Cousin Pearl brung for us. What'd you, so bring, you bring for me, Ma? Now, now, you find out. Now, I did a lot of checking today, and I found out that high society folks, especially rich ones like us, they have what you call hobbies. Hobbies and sports. What's them? Them things to keep them busy, because they don't do no work. Well, that lets me out. No, no, Granny. It's all right to work, long as the other high society people don't know you work. You see, high society folk is always bored. How come? I ain't sure. Probably because they don't work. Well, uh, why don't they just work and not bother with the... Uh... Now, Jed, let's not go to changing the rules again. We're just getting into the game. All right, girl, tell us what you want to do. Well, Mrs. Smith Stangy said, they might be wanting to take our picture for the high society page in the newspaper. So, I figure we gotta look like high society. Now, all of you go and put your clothes on, and when Miss Smith Sandy sees us, she won't have to be shamed. Now, I don't think I want to get mixed up in this nonsense. Granny, please. Oh, come on, Granny. Since it pleasures Pearl so much, it can't hurt us none. Besides, Pearl knows a lot more about high society than we do. <laughs> Thank you, dear. <clears throat> Pardon, Mrs. Smith Standish. <laughs> oh, Jean, what a uh, beautiful gown. <laughs> Mark, see, <laughs> this is my tea drinking bridge playing dress. C'est vous plaît. Oh, you speak French? Oh, yeah. I mean, we. Quel surprise, charmant. Aimez-vous parler français? Uh, well, you see, I speak it, but I don't quite understand it yet. <laughs> ah, c'est bien dommage. Uh, uh, Mrs. Smith Danish. Uh, didn't you say that they might want some pictures of us for the paper? Oh, yes, if my research dot is corroborated at FFTA in Virginia. Why, uh, pictures of the Clampett family will be on front pages of newspapers all over this country. 
that'll include me, won't it? But of course. Well, I just want you to know you won't have to be ashamed of us. Now, why would I be ashamed? Well, you know, not having much education and culture and hobbies and not speaking French and all. Uh, that is, the others. <laughs> don't fall. Well, you don't have to worry, because I've been a-working on them, and you're going to be proud when you see them. Now, you sit right here, and I'll introduce them one by one. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Smith Standish, it gives me great pleasure to present my blood cousin, that international millionaire and high society sportsman, Mr. J.D. Clampett. Yes! <laughs> Do something, Jay. A polo for us. I don't know how you polo. I feel like a name fool. Look at this thing. I don't know whether you snare them or knock them off trees. Well, you, you go and sit over there, Jed. We'll be drinking tea and playing bridge directly. <laughs> Granny, you're next. And now it gives me great pleasure to present that famous high society dowager and international sportswoman, Granny, whose favorite hobby is big game hunting in darkest Africa. <laughs> it's a good thing for you this gun ain't loaded. <laughs> Granny, you, you go on over there and sit down and we're gonna have tea and bridge. <laughs> Now, those of us who is high society knows there just ain't nothing more cultured than ballet dancing. And so it gives me great pleasure to present them wealthy, bored, international young'uns whose favorite hobby is ballet dancing, Ellie Mae and Jethro. How beautiful. That's only hey. Come on out, Jethro. I ain't gonna do it. Jethro, come on out. I don't want to, Ma. You look fine. You're just dripping culture. <laughs> Mrs. Bodine, uh, uh, Jethro shouldn't be wearing this tutu. It... See, Ma, I told you. Well, I know it ain't big enough, but it's fine for the picture. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Wait, wait, wait. Come on out. Don't sit in there and sulk. Miss Smith Standish wants us to show her how good a Virginia reel. You show it to her. I ain't no mood for dancing. Well, we can't dance it without you. Come on, everybody's getting all dressed up. I had you all dressed up and you run out on me. Earl, we just ain't ready for society that high. <laughs> now, Miss Smith Standish wants us all to get dressed for reeling. Come on out. You can wear your store-bought hair. I can't either. She's gone. Is that old go get it? <laughs> Crazy enough to eat anything. I have the most dreadful premonition that I'm making a terrible mistake in coming back here. Oh, think of your career. Mrs. Smith Standish has virtually promised to support your candidacy for West Coast Vice President of the FFT of A. <laughs> Margaret Emerson Drysdale. Vice President of the Women's Federation for the Preservation and Perpetuation of the First Family Traditions of America. West. It does rather roll off the tongue, doesn't it? It has a ring to it. <laughs> but I promise you, here and now, I'll wash no more dishes, I'll grind no more corn, and I'll make no more soap. <laughs> These aristocratic hands were only meant to hold a vice president's gavel. <laughs> Oh, you're doing beautifully, Mrs. Drysdale. I'm proud of you. You sure got the hands for it, ain't you? Mrs. Drysdale, your husband's here. He's going to dance with us. Thank goodness. Oh, my hands. My hands. They'll never be the same again. There's nothing like milking a goat to pretty the hands. 
Come on, Granny. You getting ready for the Virginia reel? I'll fetch your lap organ in for you. Oh, Mrs. Drysdale, have you seen this priceless antique lap organ? Oh, so that's what it is. I mean, it's marvelous. You like music, Mrs. Drysdale? I adore music, especially the authentic lap organ. I reckon Granny will let you have a turn, won't you, Granny? Why, sure. Mrs. Drysdale, did you hear that? Oh, what a red-letter day this is for you. Oh, yes, indeed it is, Madam President. <laughs> well, come on, let's get in there and get at it. <laughs> I wanted the telephone. It's long distance from Virginia. Oh, that's headquarters. Mr. Clampett, if our genealogical records confirm those entries in your family Bible, you will make headlines from coast to coast. Your pictures will be in every newspaper. Yee As direct descendants of the first family to settle Jamestown, you'll be celebrities, all of you. You'll be on radio, television, blown to New York for a ticker tape parade, then on to Washington to meet the president, address a joint session of Congress. Statues will be erected of you. Excuse me. The telephone? L let him roll, Miss Hathaway. Oh, she's right. I've got to come down to Earth long enough to get confirmation. Excuse me. Mrs. Smith Standish speaking. Yes? Yes! Oh, well, that was the entry in the old Bible I couldn't quite make out. Oh, well, Mr. Clampett is right here. I'm sure he'll be able to give us confirmation immediately. Mr. Clampett, if your great-grandfather's name was Ezekiel, you are the Clampett the world is waiting to discover. Well, now I... I kind of hate to disappoint you, ma'am, but uh, his name was Jeremiah. I could have told you that, Madam President. Uh, Not for one moment was I I'm fooled. sorry. No, there seems to have been some kind of a mistake. Jed? What's ailing you? You know doggone good and well your great-grandpappy's name was Ezekiel. Yeah, I know, Granny. But what would an old mountain goat like me have to say to the president and Congress? Come on, everybody, let's have another Virginia reel. Yeah! Oh, my God. 